it's the end of day two of the .NET Conf 2023, and we've got lots of exciting things to talk about. Yesterday saw the launch of Visual Studio 2022 version 17.8. It also saw the launch of .NET 8, which is an LTS version. And finally, the launch of C Sharp 12, which is very exciting. With these new technologies come some cool updates to some of the .NET 7 technology we've already been using. And if you've been on that train, then you'll be excited to see the great strides that have been made with Blazor. Guess what? It now comes by default with static server-side rendering. Yay! <laughs> what is that, you might ask? Well, that's a new feature of .NET that puts it in functional parity with, drum roll please, web forms from .NET 1.0. <laughs> I just, of course, it's a lot more complicated than that, but it's so funny to see us go right back to where we started to a certain extent. In this video, we're going to be exploring a new project template, Blazor Web Apps. We'll be walking through and explaining some of its capabilities so that you guys have a sense of when and where it makes sense to get on board with the next future of .NET Web App development. We start by creating a new project. You should see the Blazor Web App template listed among the initial template types. If you don't, you can filter on the project types dropdown for Blazor and pick it from there. Select Blazor Web App and hit Next to pick the name and location of the project. And on the next screen, you should see the settings for some of the new capabilities that you get with this new project template. Of course, at the top, you see .NET 8, so nothing changes there. One interesting thing about this particular project type is that you can't select any other version of .NET because much of the capabilities only exist in the .NET 8 runtime. Authentication type allows you to select whether you want authentication included as part of the project. This to me is nice in a situation where you're learning, but it's just not a very serious feature as it would not be used in a real world scenario. What would have been cool to see here is some kind of Entra based authentication. For those who don't know what Entra is, that's the new name of Azure AD. Sadly, Low code, no code, or as I like to refer to it, low code chokehold has taken a hold of most of the internal web app development, meaning that there would likely be no need for an enterprise to be having a custom website authenticating through Azure AD. I like to disable HTTPS, but of course, the choice is yours with what you want to do with your local development environment. And now we get to the meat and potatoes of this new platform. Click on the interaction mode dropdown and you get the choice of the kind of capabilities that you want the web app to have. None is a default and gives you boilerplate Blazor without any WebAssembly or Blazor server features. When this is selected, client side events are not triggered on the server side but you do have the ability to submit forms to the server and to wrap the form data in an object. Server provides rich interactivity between client and server, but relies on a persistent SignalR connection between the two. Think client-server model from back in the day. The problem with this is that the connection does not persist indefinitely. So when a user sits on a page for too long, they get a notification that the page is now inactive. I mostly use this on pages that are meant to be used for a definite period of time. I usually have a timer that redirects the user back to a standard page when that time elapses. That being said, there is also the problem with the number of persistent connections that can be maintained in a large scale multi-use environment. Beware of this and ensure that you have properly architected your site when selecting this option. With WebAssembly, it downloads the WebAssembly libraries for your website down to the user's machine. 
This would be the most ideal solution except for one thing. Updating your site with new capabilities turns into DLL hell and comes with the same kinds of issues as installing your software on a massive number of devices. There have been many instances where a version of my site got stuck on a given machine because the client side browser just was caching it. And the only way to get the newer version is a hard refresh of the user's page. How exactly do you communicate that to a user of your site who's basically just clicking around and might have just have landed on it inadvertently? On top of that, depending on the size of your web application, there might be a period of time needed to download everything to the machine before the page can even show up. Again, consider all options before picking this one. Auto allows you to do both. When you hit the page the first time, it uses Blazor's server while it starts downloading WebAssembly libraries down to the client machine. On subsequent calls, the WebAssembly version is used. This resolves the issue of the user waiting for long periods of time before your site is rendered in a scenario where you have a very large site, but it doesn't solve the general problem with having multiple deployments of your application on multiple machines. For now, we're going to pick none. The next item is the interaction location. Global enables whatever your interactivity selection is to run across the entire project, while the page slash component selection allows you to pick the page or component that you want to have interactivity in on a case by case basis. To me, this is the better of the two as it gives you far more flexibility to decide what page you want to have be interactive and what page can just remain static. Finally, you can choose if you want to include sample pages and whether or not to use top level statements. Now that we've made all our selections, let's click create. Thanks for watching this brief walkthrough. In the next videos, we'll be continuing with live examples of the various combinations that are available to us with this new project type. If you like our content, please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget about our Yoga Book 9i giveaway. All you need to be eligible is be in the United States, be a subscriber, and leave a comment in any of our videos. We'll be picking from that pool once we hit our 500 subscriber target, so spread the word. In the meantime, thanks, happy coding, and as always, have a blessed day.